Hey guys, it's Chris. I come again with a new tutorial. As you saw in the intro of the video, today we will build another breadboard friendly module the way I did on my last project video for the decoder module. We will create an MCP23017 based breakout board. This circuit provides 16 GPIO expansion for any sort of microcontroller so you can interface with this integrated circuit using an Arduino, STM32, Raspberry Pico or any other MCU dev board as long as it has a I2C communication port. The module will include 16 LEDs for output indication and another 16 for input status indication. We will try to keep the whole circuit in one compact area to keep the module breadboard friendly. I move it to Altium Designer and I grab it the MCPIC from the online library. Make sure that you are selecting the SOIC28 package since it refers to the SMD package. The IC also available through other packages like the QFN and DIP but we will not use these ones for our module. After getting the MCP, I brought the input indication yellow LEDs and the output indicators ones will be orange light LEDs. Each LED is preceded by a pull down resistor. I will use a high resistance value to keep a soft light of the LEDs so anything around 1k ohm resistor will go fine. All LEDs and resistors are 0402 package. I choose this tiny size package to keep the module as smaller as possible. Make sure that you are placing the LEDs in a reversed position to separate the input and output current flow for the MCP GPIOs. I gave access to all MCP pins through these seal header connectors. Moving to the PCB designing stage, as always, measuring the board width is the most important part which will keep the module fit on any prototyping breadboard. The seal connectors will be spaced by 8 inches equivalent to 20.32 millimeters and the module width is 22.86 millimeters equivalent to 9 inches. I placed the MCP IC in the middle of the module and I distributed the LED indicators to the top and bottom sides of the PCB. Before start routing, make sure that you set the design rules parameters to match the PCB manufacturer capabilities. After routing, here is the 3D view of the module and it looks so neat. I generated the related Gerbil files and I moved it to JLC PCB to place my order. Six days later, I got the parcel on my desktop and here are my designed PCBs turned out properly. I prepared my desktop for the assembly mode. All components and tools are ready. If you are willing to assemble these tiny components by hand, then you must have a solder iron with a pointy end solder tip, small cross section solder core, and some flocks. All components look ready. Now it's time to assemble. After finishing the assembly, don't forget to clean the board with some flux removal solvent. As you can see guys, the module its compact size makes it suitable for prototyping. Before start testing the module, let's get back to the datasheet and check again the pinout description. I remind you that our integrated circuit is based on I2C communication and here are the SCL and SDA pins for clock and data. We also have these three input pins, A0, A1 and A2 for hardware address. 
It gives us these 8 possible addresses. It means that you can place 8 MCP ICs to get controlled in parallel through the I2C bus. I will use Arduino Nano for this project. I gave the address 7 to my module by putting all the address pins to 5V. Also make sure that you connect the reset pin to 5V, otherwise the module will not start. Then I connected SCL of my module to Arduino SCL located in pin A5. And then I connected the SDA of my module to Arduino SDA located in pin A4. I run the Arduino IDE and I imported the MCP library by Adafruit. It really helps to interface with this module since you will be handling digital functions of Arduino APIs. I create this instance for my MCP module and I gave it the address 7 to make my module recognize it through the I2C bus. I then made these animations to test the outputs of my module. After uploading the code, you can see that the LEDs are dancing depending on the animations that I have made. And check mark for output testing. Now in order to test input reading, I will connect this push button to the digital input D0 of my module and using this code, whenever I press the push button, I get a message through the serial monitor and also I get the input indicator lighting up. We are done with today's breakout module, I will be waiting for your suggestions about more other modules ideas. Do not miss to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more electronics videos. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time. <music>